biggest ruling of chanting of the Talbiyah, insyaAllah, with the invocation of intention, one has entered the Hajj and Umrah. It is sunnah to increase chanting of Talbiyah. Last week, when we read this, we did not um, went through about the Talbiyah of Hajj and Umrah. This last time, when we used to bring group, we only heard the Talbiyah as Labaik Allahumma Labaik, Labaik Allah Sharika Laka Labaik. When I went through Sheikh Fawzi's uh, notes again, um, it is sunnah. It is not a prerequisite in a haram or in Hajj Umrah to read the chanting. But it is sunnah. It is highly recommended. When we come to it, we see the meaning of it when we understand it, we answer the call of Allah Ta'ala. But in the Hanafi school of thought, I think it is compulsory. For Shafi'i, it is not compulsory. For the Hanafi, it is compulsory for them to read the chanting of Talbiyah. But here, what uh, we went through last week was the recitation of uh, Talbiyah is actually okay. So, um, chanting of Talbiyah is the answering the call of the Hajj and Umrah Allah call us In the first chanting when we wear the Ihram For the Hajj actually is Labbaik Allah humma bil Hajjatin it's not in the notes. Is this compulsory? It is sunnah. It is encouraged. And for umrah, they will read Labaik Allahumma bi umratin labaik. Labaik bil hajjatin Labaik Allahumma bil hajjatin labaik. That is for a hajj. It's a bit confusing. But over here, if you answer in English or in Malay, I hit your call for hajj, oh Allah. I answer, say, Saya panggil, saya jawab panggilanmu. It's it's somewhere there. But uh, what I heard last night from Mr. Spalzi uh, lecture was that he add on this. But it is only for the first time. After it went as per normal. Labaik Allahumma labaik, labaik ala syarik, labaik ala, labaik ala syarik, labaik ala syarik, labaik ala syarik, inna al wa ni'mata laka wal mu'k la syarik. So if <coughs> we can remember, we read. If we can put it, not read it, we put. But then we'll be reading together. Because we are flying, inshallah, from Dubai, when we went down our Ahram, we'll be reading together. It's just that in a we are not reading so loud because there are some people who might not be going for Hajj on that day, they might be going to Jeddah to work, even though we are coming from Dubai. Yeah? So, but then, inshallah, as per book, we are all on the same journey, inshallah, which we look forward. 19, we'll be together, inshallah. So, they'll be reminded again. I'm just repeating this because last week we missed that out. We will continue today about the. <coughs> you want to start all over again from this, or it's a short topic and anyway. I can start from the back. Yeah. The ruling for this sunnah in one hajj is valid. Even the invocation for Shafi school of thought, even the invocation of the intention without talbiyah is chant. That means a person says, "I perform my hajj in a haram for the sake of Allah," and then he falls asleep, or he keeps talking. He talks, 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 talks. It is not wrong. His heart is not uh, invalid. It's in, it is valid. But one of the period where your dua is accepted is when you are in the ibadah. Example, when you take out your hands, Allah, performing prayers. Do we talk? We don't talk. We try not to think about other things also. We try to be khushuk to Allah Ta'ala in our prayers. So, Talbiyah, when you read the Ihram intention for Hajj or Umrah, is part of an ibadah. So when you start chanting, actually, there is one period or part, there is one part where they call it the mustajab of the in the in the period of Ahram, all the way until you take out the Ahram. So it is good for us to read Talbiyah. And of course, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi after that, which we go on, how he does his uh, Talbiyah and what did he recite after that. So it is encouraged, rather than talking to somebody, we read. In the Arabic, we don't shout, because, you know, there are some people will be reading according to our own voice. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik ala sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'amata laka wal mutla sharika laka. But in the mosque, in Masjid Haram, we can raise a voice. In the outside mosque, the line which we say that we should not raise a voice. Because some people are praying, some people are not performing the hajj, they are sitting there, they will be doing zikir or reading Quran, we will be disturbing them. On the journey, from Jeddah to, to Mecca, we can chant as loud as possible. It is sunnah for the men to raise the voice, but for the ladies to lower the voice a bit. Yeah? That we covered. Eh? Its importance. Here, related by uh, Jabir, Allah, 
the Prophet ﷺ, is, he says that there is none who chants Talbiya all through a full day until the sunset, except that his sins will be erased as, uh, to such as instant he was given birth by his mother. So, a person who dawns his ahram, in our case, uh, probably from, uh, inshallah, from Dubai, when we don the ahram, we make our intention, we start reading the Talbiya, until the sunset of that day, subhanallah, Allah erased all our sins as if we are just newborn. Not done our hajj yet. It says there is none who chants the Talbiya all through the full day until the sun sets, except that his sins will be erased to such. It didn't cease until your hajj is completed. The reward. It's so easy to get. It's hard to do. You know why? For example, myself, got a very big mouth, like to talk. Talk this, talk that. So I may be one of the person who will be a cause of your challenge. They will be distracting you, talking about this, talking about trying to explain my experience, trying to show this and that. So that will be another problem, isn't it? So if we know that, what are we supposed to do in the first chapter when we learn? What are we reminded to do? If we forget, let's hold something in our hand that we will remember. Istighfar. At least, minimum, maybe 10,000 times, if we can, prior to departure. Whether we're going or not, it will be a good example, a good practice. And the other thing was, to read the salutation to the Prophet If we make it a habit, so much so with someone accidentally forgot and start talking and you know then you will say Astaghfirullah Razim and this person will be reminded he is not offended because we are in the same class we are going to a bigger class who is teaching the same thing Sheikh Fauzi teach the same thing prior to departure please make a lot of istighfar make a lot of salat so we are just joining the same group it will be beautiful so can we just see anyone has done the 1000 this time by today MashaAllah is more any ladies have done more than 1000 or 1000 at least there's nothing to be shy because you know why? We own up that we are doing this. Alhamdulillah, we have got a few ladies there. You know, we're not checking because we're taking attendance, but it is our own self. The more you read, the more pleasurable you feel, and then it becomes a habit while driving, while cooking. It's, it's ibadah, and every day you get reward. Why we start until Ahram, isn't it? Why we start until Haram land? We can start here, and every day Allah will write the reward. Who gets the reward? Who gets the reward? You. And who else? Your parents. See? And the house is blessed. Because in the house is full of zikir, salawat, isn't it? Even though you do silently, cooking, washing, doing some gardening, you get. So it is encouraged strongly. And we, we remind each other, you know, inshallah, this is something good we should advise and, and share with other people. Eh? Another hadith related, related here uh, from Sahal bin Sa'ad, it was related to the Prophet. Sallam, that he says there is no Muslim who chants the Talbiyah except that everything on his right or left will chant the Talbiyah in turn, be it the stone, the wood, or the ground, till the earth itself should, it will come and emerge from here and there. The earth, they will also come. They want to hear the Talbiyah, they will come. But what happens in Yaumil Qiyamah? They say, Oh Allah, I testify this person, he, he praise you in this world. And everyone become witness. You know, there was one story in the Tasawf, I just shared with you. This man was not of a good character. You know, he did not perform his prayers, he did not practice proper Muslim. But one day, he took a small stone, a small pebble, pebble, and he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, bear witness that I, Allah is my Lord, and Prophet Muhammad SAW is my messenger. And it's a small pebble, he moved on with his life. One day he died. This is story related by the Tasawf teacher. So if you find somebody, you might not find it. Eh? It's Tasawf teacher. So what happened was he died. And the angels of hell were supposed to take him. And the angels of uh, heaven were supposed to take him. So both are fighting. No, the, sorry, sorry. The angel of hell was supposed to take him and throw him in the hell. He was about to, throw, to be thrown in the hell. Suddenly a big stone came and covered the door of the hell. So the angel said, move away. Allah has commanded me to throw him in hell. The stone said, Allah has commanded me to stop you and close the door of hell. Because he testified during his lifetime that Allah is his messenger. Just a small pebble. What did he did? One time. Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. What the hadith says here? When you read Talbiya, chanting, the stone, the wood, the earth, the birds, the fish, the everything, the trees, Everything, subhanallah, even maybe the air is not stated here. Maybe even the dust, the atoms, they all witness. 
Are they not living thing created by Allah Ta'ala? They are. And they be witness. Subhanallah. Can you imagine that amount of soldiers that Allah give us to support us in Yawmil Qiyamah, the defense council for us? Subhanallah. Over here you have to pay. Isn't it? Sometimes you have to get people to be your witness in a traffic accident or minor things. Isn't it? There Allah give you all this. So let's do this. Remind me also. Remind each other because sometimes along the way we forget. We will be talking. It's nice at this new building. Wow, eh, the now is just here. No? It's now new building. You know who will be saying that? Probably myself. Like, because I experience, cannot keep my mouth shut. So you will be thinking, so, La baik Allah, humma la baik. I also remind them, oh, okay. Wait up there. Because we are weak. Isn't it? That's why we need friends who are good around us. Bird of feathers flock together. So we have to be. We have to remind each other for the good things. Yeah? So do not be shy. Tomorrow if you see I'm talking out so much and you just give me a tap. Tap and tell me, you know. Tap ya, Haji. Just tap me. Nothing wrong. I'm not going to fight. You know, I have to learn because I'm not perfect, isn't it? Because I would be a big challenge for you. Wallah, I tell you. Because you know what? Sometimes we think that we know so much. May Allah forgive me and guide me, inshallah. From this hadith, it is apparent that it's sunnah to intensify, intensify one's voice when talbiyah, though it should not be loud and the mosque as it will distract the congregation except for the haram mosque which we just mentioned. In Mina, everywhere we go, we'll be doing talbiyah. This sunnah to intensify one's voice is only for men. For women, they don't. Eh? It is macro for a woman, undesirable for them to chant so loudly. And the manners of chanting Talbiyah, the Talbiyah may be chanted individually or in congregation. Sometimes in a bus, inshallah, if you were the group leader, the group leader will read. How the group leader will read? He says, Labbaik Allah, Humma Labbaik, you will follow. Okay, after I read, then you will follow. This is, we are in a group where the group leader, Sorry, Pasalam. The group leader will read. Maybe somebody from uh, Shays Fauzi group or maybe among us will give you the speaker and you read. So let's let's practice this. Huh? I will read once and you will follow. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik ala sharik ala ka labbaik. Labbaik ala sharik ala ka labbaik. Inna alhamda. Inna alhamda. Wa ni'amata. Wa ni'amata. Laka wal mulk. Laka wal mulk. La sharik ala. La sharik ala. We didn't hear the words of the ladies today. Yeah, because it was told to go softly. It's okay for this time we practice. Here you can go a bit loud. Otherwise, you do not know whether you're reading rightly or maybe you're doing the wrong one, isn't it? Uh, so the ladies can practice together. The other way, the group leader or the individual who's in front, they read together. They read together. Let's read together. All the ladies also can read louder at this time. Because we want to see that you read correctly. Because sometimes when you read, you might read, it twisted the tongue. So let's read together. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik ala sharika laka labbaik Inna alhamda wa ni'amada Laka wal mulk la sharika laka Did we feel anything? Did we feel the presence now in Mecca? We should, isn't it? Because this chanting is not recited anywhere except for in Ahram, in Mecca, not even in Madinah Poi saja, haji ni. Huh? Amat already in haji now. Subhanallah, isn't it? And it's only in haji period on umrah. So, alhamdulillah, we have chanted this, and everything this house becomes witness. Even though we are not in ahram, you know, even though we are practicing, we are actually answering the call of Allah. It says here it is sunnah to silly chant it in odd, such as three, five, seven, nine, eleven. But what happens? Suppose. We did not come. We come we keep on reading. It's okay. It's all right. It is sunnah. If we are counting, we do odd numbers. But if we could not, because we're just going and going, it's all right. Yeah. And and or talbia with a short salutation to the Prophet and then you make dua. Yeah. Because it's stated here, as stated by Qasim bin Muhammad bin Abu Bakar who said. It is sunnah for one who has completed chanting the Tawbiyah to recite the salutation salawat, whatever form of salawat, and for the Prophet. Yeah? So what kind of salawat do you want to do? Allah Masa Allah Masa Allah Muhammad Mawla Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can do even a long salawat you can do. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
had completed chanting Talbiyah, he would then beseech for forgiveness and acceptance from Allah, and then he would seek forgiveness from men. This is from Tabrani and others. The Does the Prophet have any sins to Allah Ta'ala? This is any sins to the human being? But how humble he is. He asks forgiveness from his companions, from the people around him. So what we do normally in our Talbiyah, normally we will shake hands from the right, from the left, after prayers, isn't it? So it's, it is a practice for us who have seen people. You know in Mina, when someone put the slippers there, sometimes we are going, we accidentally kick the slipper up. Or sometimes when someone is coming in, we accidentally stop him from entering. Or maybe someone comes up and says, Damn, we have my slippers, someone keep, we have offended some without knowing, male or female. So that is why we keep asking for forgiveness after chanting. Someone will come, forgive me. Yeah? People say you are crazy, and I'm being. Because we know we are following the Sunnah of the Prophet. The Prophet who is not so, who has no sins to the other human being, still asks for forgiveness after chanting the Talbiyah. So why not us? We can start practicing from now, after prayers. After prayers, we're in the mosque, in the house, to the wife, to the husband, to the children. We should. It should be a practice. Don't need on Eid al-Fitri, the wife come and see the husband, forgive me for all my sins for one whole year. The children come and see the parents. That should not be only once a year. It should be after every prayer. The children pray and then they kiss the parents' hand. Maybe they didn't say, but you know, we encourage them, you know, hold their head with the wife. So it becomes a common practice in our family. How beautiful if the grandchildren is watching. How beautiful if the husband and wife does that and the children are watching. So it becomes a practice. It's out of context, right? But that's where we start. The English would say, charity start at home. Why do we want to start until the Mekah Madina? We pray together with family sometimes. The opportunity comes, we pray to my husband wife. So after prayers, what do we do? Salaamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam. Some of them didn't even have zikir, you know. After the prayers, then they off, they go quietly. But if we, we do a little bit zikir, and then we do a little bit for our parents, for ourselves, for our children, for our well-being. And then, wife kiss the husband's hand. Of course, because of Shafi, they, they use the... The telecom and they cover, isn't it? It, it? it can be done. Subhanallah, I'm sure most of us do it, isn't it? So, but then we encourage. So at the most also the same thing after prayers, we hug each other, we see each other, we ask him for forgiveness. So this is done by the Prophet Sallallahu After he is Talbiya, he and then he asks for forgiveness, he asks forgiveness from Allah Ta'ala and to the human being. So we would be doing that. Which we miss most of us when for Umrah, when for us, we did not know. We did Talbiya on our own self, individually, and then that's it, done, full stop, period. We make some dua, maybe some of us, maybe some of us didn't even make the chanting of the, I mean the salutation. So now we know, so we put a note somewhere, after Talbiya, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad, shortest, and then we make dua, oh Allah, please forgive me, forgive my parents. And then we go to the next person, Salam alaikum, how are you, forgive me, please. Because excellent, sometimes you know, in Tawaf, you might push someone, maybe taking the food, you might, you might even have, uh, elbow somebody, this applies to all of us every day in our life. Yeah? Location where it is sunnah to chant the talbiyah. It is sunnah to chant the talbiyah at several locations. That is when boarding and alighting a vehicle. This is where after we don the ihram. Where do we start? In the plane from Dubai, inshallah. Once we make the intention, we'll be doing our chanting. That is where we say, when we are in the vehicle, ascending, descending, when encountering somebody in a pilgrim in Mina, we come across someone, we also just say the same thing. Because of the, uh, Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala says, we look at, his, at it as sunnah in all situations. In all situations when you do the talbiyah, it's sunnah. It is strongly encouraged. So we do not limit just only when we are in the aeroplane and then arriving at Jeddah, we did not. Even when you arrive at Jeddah, waiting for the immigration, waiting for the custom, of course you feel tired. You feel tired, you, slow, you stop for a while, have some drink, relax, relax for a while. After when you start taking the bus again to Mecca, start chanting. You'll be going to Shisha. Start chanting again. You fall asleep. When you fall asleep, the angels write that is Ibadah. The last words you did was, Allahumma, like the old record. Allahumma. The angels write down, that is Ibadah, your last words. All the way, even you sleep, it's taken as ibadah, mashallah. We do not do anything, we just read the last word, we fall asleep, it's taken as ibadah. So we, we, we want that, because you know why? We are in Hajj and Umrah, we want to score as much reward as possible. Yeah. Take this a bit serious, because some of us, they become excited and they start to uh, talk different things. And sometimes, 
talk the wrong things and then we start talking about other people, we start talking about other pilgrims and then we start complaining about the guy in the counter, you know, the Saudi guys and that. it doesn't benefit us. We First and foremost, let's discuss now. We are going to go through a process of difficulty. A process of difficulty, why? We are taking plane to Singapore. That's one part of difficulty in our journey. It's very difficult. Then from Singapore, we are taking a flight to Dubai. That's another part of difficulty, transit. In Dubai, again, about two hours flight to Jeddah. All these are a little bit of difficulty. So it's no point talking and complaining about it because we are going to face this. Let's face that properly and strongly together. And then when we arrive Jeddah, after all the hours of flight and, and delay and, and whatever it is, Jeddah, Allah may test us with the immigration guy, custom guy, making it difficult. Uh, some of us has gone Umrah and Hajj, we have seen how they behave. But that's the way it is. Rather than complaining, we absorb. We cannot compare them to the Australian, we cannot compare them to the Singapore or Sri Lanka where we came from. We have to understand these people are dealing with millions of pilgrims. Period. I used to come over there and start making noise, complain, you know, these buggers, they are like... But then when you realize, one day how many planes landed? In that hour, 8 hours shift, maybe 10 hours shift, they were, number of people like came across to them, subhanAllah. If we were to sit over there, probably we also give up. Maybe we also start saying something, you know. So these guys have a way how they want to release their tensions. Sometimes it could be us at the point of breaking up on. So it's okay. We learn today to absorb and just to just let it be. So when we come out from that immigration or a custom, if we are served 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 12 hours, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Full stop. It's easy saying, right? We will be challenged. But if we re prepare now, we remind each other. Because we do not want from the beginning of it, this, on the life starts writing all the minus point. You know? So we, we work together. Work together in, in such a way that when we arrive there, all the challenges becomes easy and beautiful flowers. Inshallah. We, can do we can't do this alone, but we can do it together. Yeah? The timing is when we start from the Ahram, and then all the way down. So all the way until we uh, finish the era. Yeah? Anything, uh, Brother Hasik? You want to speak to him? Yeah. You okay? You see, um, from the moment of Ahram, this is Hajj, eh? Hajj. From the moment of Ahram until the stoning of Jamra Aqaba on Idul Adha, this is based on the Hadith. This is Tabia for Hajj. Yeah, timing. The Prophet ﷺ in the Hadith says, chanted the Talbiya incessantly until he arrived at the Jamrah. So that means when? From the day he wears his Ahram, all the way until Jamrah. When is Jamrah? After he's got to Mina, Muzalifa, the Tarbiya, Muzalifa, then Arafah, and then he comes back. Subhanallah, he chanted Talbiya. He didn't say so. the Prophet talk to somebody, give lecture, teaching, no. He just told me, of course, in between the proper rest and prayer time. and, and But that, what is, we are trying to see over here is that the chanting of Talbiya started that all the way until Jamrah, to Aqaba. That is the first day of Jamrah. Yeah? Consequently, the Hajj pilgrim should not accord preference to chanting the Takbir of Idul Adha, except after stoning Jamrah Aqaba on the morning of Idul Adha, as written by uh, the Hadith, written by Tabrani. Which means, very the Prophet saw some chanting Takbir, I added on this to the notes. The notes that you receive, that's not right takbir, it just be chanted. So I put that in red on the day of Tashrik after the Zohar, Salat, Bidul Adha, until he depart from Mina on the third day. Some of us, some of the Jumu'ah, they complain. They say, why are we not reading ta uh, takbir on the night of the Idul Adha? Why? Because in Singapore, in Australia, in Sri Lanka, on the night of Idul Adha, you read takbir. Isn't it? Anyway, in the world, you read takbir on the night of the Idul Adha. You read Allahu Akbar Allah. But we are not because we are in Ihram. Then you will hear people reading because they are not performing Hajj. There will be people in Arafah wearing gummies. They do not perform Hajj because they are the drivers. They are some of the workers. They are some of the locals who did not perform Hajj. They were reading Takbir. So we, what is nice to hear? Takbir is nice. Chanting Takbir is not nice because something which is the ears like to hear. But that's not what we want to do. We are required to read the Talbiya. Until when? Until Rasulullah SAW stone, he tahlul, he prays Zohor. After Zohor, he changed. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That is after the prayer of Zohor. 
So prior to that are all chanting of Talbiyah. There would be people who will be talking on that. How come we're not talking? How come we're not? There would be. Because knowledge, ignorance. They go for courses. We go for courses. The difference is understanding of the message. So here it says the Prophet Sallallahu he did not chant the Takbir until on the day of Tashrik after Zohar prayers, Salat on Idul Adha. That means, because morning you're doing your Jamratul Akaba, and then you go for the shaving. Then you come back. You wash and you clean yourself. Because we did not go to Haram to pray our Idul Adha. Yeah? So this, just follow the group. To make it easy, follow the group. When do we do takbir? When we start do the takbir. Because we are going to be in the group, inshallah. Is this clear, brothers and sisters? For the talbiyah of Umrah, it is sunnah to chant the talbiyah from the moment of ihram until that of kissing and touching the Hajar Aswad, the black stone, at Ka'bah's age. At the beginning of the Umrah, Tawaf, this is on the authority of Ibn Abbas, the Prophet Sallallahu stopped chanting the Talbiyah during the Umrah when he had kissed, touched the Hajar Aswad. This hadith was related by Parmizi who said, this is a good and authentic hadith which becomes a ritual lead for many. Can we start by kissing the Hajar Tul Aswad? We can't, isn't it? Because the crowd. This we are talking in Umrah. When is this Umrah? For those who do Ifrat, they will do the Umrah after that. For those who do Tamato, they do Umrah first, right? We are repeating and trying to identify the Tamato and uh, the brother. What it says over here, during the Prophet Sallallahu time, when the crowd was not intense, the Prophet, when he donned his Ahram, from wherever Buddhists say, from Medina when he comes, or from the city Anshah Mosque, or from his home, which is staying from Mecca, then when he donned his Ahram, he makes the intention, he chanted the Talbiyah, until at the black stone. Why the black stone? Because that's where the beginning of Tawaf. He chanted, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik ala sharik, ala ka labbaik, inna alhamdul. Until he reached at the black stone, before he makes his intention to perform the Tawaf, he stopped. But during the prophet time, it was easy for the prophet himself to kiss the black stone, or even is still on the black stone from close. But we have this difficulty. So where, what do we do? We talbiya all the way to the mosque, and then enter the mosque, make dua, and then we seek our make dua, and then we chant it all the way until just in front, we make intention. I'm performing my tawa, umrah tawa, for the sake of Allah. We stop. Bismillah wa akbar bi hajar aswad. And then we start moving by reading, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, or any other citation that you are pleased with. Yeah? Does that apply for hajj? No, isn't it? Hajj is different. Hajj is until that tashrik, eh? This is for Umrah. Because some of us are bidding Umrah. After the Hajj, you're bidding your Umrah. Sunat Umrah. And some of you are bidding Umrah for your parents. Umrah for somebody. So, note about this. When chanting starts, for people in Mecca, will be from the mosque of Siti Aisha. Again, you'll be guided, inshallah. The wisdom of this Talbiyah. The Talbiyah represents a covenant and a declaration by one who begins stepping for his journey towards Allah. It symbolizes one's total and undivided submission to the Almighty Creator. And this can be felt in every utterance of Talbiya as expressed later on, which we will read. What it says over here, when you go to work, when you apply for a job, you have a contract that you'll be getting this amount of salary, you'll be working this number of hours, you'll be performing this, this kind of work. That is, there's an utterance of convenient declaration to, between you and the company. But this, we have declaration to Allah Ta'ala. So what it says over here, the first time we says, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. I heed your call, O Allah. I heed your call. With these words, a covenant is contracted by the slave to heed always all Allah's command. Call which is committed through the Al-Quran. Allah always tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu. Those who believe. O oh, ye who believe. So we are the believers, Alhamdulillah. Allah has chosen us from the Muslims community as the believers we perform what Allah has commanded prayers, fasting, zakat isn't it? so Alhamdulillah we should be very happy we should be thankful to Allah for we are among the people inshallah this until the day of Yom al that we have been selected as the people who believe we believe in Allah we listen to His command so here we have answered His call 
Oh, ye who believe, and he say, I your call, oh Allah. Those days when the companions were called by the Prophet, and they will say, Labbaika, Labbaika, Ya Rasulullah. They say, I answer your call, Ya Rasulullah. Labbaika, Allahumma Labbaika, I answer your call. Labbaika, Ya Rasulullah. I mean, people, when the companions call, they also, Labbaika, Ya Rasulullah. I answer your call, Ya Rasulullah. Here, to be able to recite this Labbaika, Allahumma Labbaika, you know how high we have been taken by Allah Ta'ala? Because there are how many millions of Muslims, billions of Muslims, how many of them will be answering this call? In their daily life, in performing the Hajj and Umrah, in whatever we are doing as a servant to Allah. You know, this is the lowest form of we think that Allah says, Allah says we are the best created among His creations. But actually, we are the lowest form when we become the servant of Allah. We should be the humility coming over there. Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Not Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Not came for Hajj. Okay. That's not. We came with full of humility, answering the call. This is the all master. Ya Khalid. The one that just now shared Yazid read about the Asma al -Husna. If you see the meaning, Subhanallah, the 99 names. That is what we saw the meaning. The reading only. But if we were to encompass that into us, where do we stand? Nothing. The speck of dirt is more bigger than us actually. This world. So we are answering his call with all full of humility and all the sins that we are going to bring to surrender to our time. So have that in the heart. How are we going to make this alive in our heart if we do not practice istighfar, zikir, and there is no loving in our heart, there is so much of hatred. We can't. Yesterday, Haji Kiraman shared his class with us about Tasawf. It was, it was something which we could relate to, cleansing ourselves. What was it like? I can't remember. I was talking to Father yesterday. I said, This is good. What was it, Father? Do you mind me? <laughs> 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 yeah, about the anger. About the three level of anger. Mm. See, anger, person who we have never identified as angry, person who is very humble, can be the biggest lion in some place. Someone who we know is very angry can become the most timid guy somewhere. So Allah tests us and we hope that Allah will keep our uh, shame and, and all our weaknesses because there sometimes this minus thing can become very big. And this topic is important, I want to touch. Because sometimes, accidentally, in a family, husband and wife, children, closest friends, we sometimes we do not have any limits. We just let go. We don't care. Because you know what? The husband is over the wife. You are married to me. The wife is over the husband. You work lower job, I work higher job. Or maybe the children are all grown up. Or I'm the father, the children must listen to me. This we should slowly, 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 not, not drastically, because we are human beings, pick it up. Because yesterday Haji Kiraman said, which is correct, it affects me so much also, because I'm one of those person who's got anger too. Who's got no anger here? Can anyone carry their hand got no anger? Yeah, I got big anger. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> well, he got anger also. When he wants something, he, he's angry. <laughs> Does he have anger? He has anger on a small one. He has tantrums. Huh? They call it tantrums in children. Children, they call, they call anger, they call tantrums. He doesn't get, they start they go, bully, bully everywhere they want. I want, I want, I want. You know, they want more, they start crying. That's anger that yeah. develops. But we, especially <coughs> us, especially forgive me men, husbands, Sometimes our anger is beyond, beyond control. We abuse our loved ones unconditionally in front of everybody. In front of friends sometimes. Sometimes in front of our children. Unconditionally we just abuse them. You do not know. We shut up this and that. I'm talking about myself as, as an example. We should learn how to hold our tongue because the moment we hurt our loved one in front of someone, that, that mark is going to be somewhere there and it's not going to be erased. Are we following this one? It's very important. You know why? I've seen, well, I was with, I've seen this thing happen in Mecca. If you do not control this stuff, it happens there in front of everybody. There are people which have, we have shared this before, they came back, they divorced. Came back, Hajj divorced. They are good friends, the best of friends go away there, come back, enemy, the greatest enemy. 
there are people who are strangers. They came back, they became the best of family. Next year, they go Umrah together, they go holiday together, they start visiting each other together. The children got married, they became the best of the, among the family to, to support the, the majlis. They are. Which one do we want to choose? We want to choose the one that if we were strangers, we become closer. But if we were loved ones, we become more closer. Because this journey is going to bring us to Jannah. This is Allah's promise. Allah's promise, the reward of good hajj is Jannah. I mean, am I going alone? My wife, my children don't go in? Cannot. Over here, we're so loving, the children seek me because send them to the doctor. They go exam, we make dua for them. The wife in trouble, we are, we are there for her. The husband in trouble, the wife is there for, her, eh, for him and them. There is, okay, you, you listen, you go to hell, I go to hell. Uh, cannot, cannot. So let's, let's try. I know uh, these things are not easy to do, but can be done because one of the lectures we heard what Sheikh Fauzi says, which we share, nothing is impossible. Now it's 11.45. 10.45. It will be 10.50 in a while more. Is it impossible to be 10.50? It is going to be 10.50. And the one more will be afternoon, and then evening, and then night. It will change. The only one that cannot change is Allah Ta'ala doesn't change. The rest all change. Today is a, what date today? Third. It's no more second of June 2012. It's change. Next year you will get second June 2013. It's not going to be 2012. So why? Why we cannot change? Slowly. So I'm pleading, I'm begging because I've seen in our relationship back back then, not here. Here we are all near to each other. But we know ourselves, our weaknesses. Let's let's put somewhere, quietly in a small blank book. <laughs> you know, I need to do A, B, C. Because if we don't do this, what we are afraid, Allah expose us and then we might be in we if we are not able to take that challenge from Allah, we might just totally change and become what the hours be like that. So let's let's make an effort. Let's make a promise to ourselves. Let's make an ikrar to ourselves inside our heart quietly that we will try. And Allah all hearing, He will help. Can we do that inshallah, brothers and sisters? Inshallah. Because here sometimes our anger supersedes. Huh? Sometimes the anger supersedes. Sometimes when we want to scold somebody, this I'm talking about myself, huh? which has been termed as one of those who always embarrass people, I have to hold my tongue. I have to, because these are my weaknesses. When we identify our weaknesses, we then, hopefully, people will come and say, eh, you forgot what you promised about. So please, brothers and sisters, yeah, I'm appealing. Help me. Help us. Yeah. Again, on this part, uh, last week, there was this question, uh, Aini asked, Aini, you asked a question about people who did not go on uh, Tahalo, isn't it? They forget to read the condition. And uh, my apology to uh, Sheikh Fadil, because I accidentally said, Fadil has to fast for one year. <laughs> Sorry, but it was it's not meant to hurt you. Right? It was just uh, because I'm comfortable using the name of people that I know. So I say that oh, Fadil Kassan has to fast for one year. I hope you're not offended. Like, please, if, if you are, forgive me. Today. <laughs> it's a practice that I want to ask forgiveness. Because yeah, the question was relevant. <laughs> the question was relevant. A question was asked in one part where a person who do not put precondition in their Umrah or in their Hajj, I'm sorry, in the Umrah, that I perform my Ihram, uh, I intend to perform my Umrah in Ihram with condition, should I come into sickness, be uh, sickness of medication or woman who is in head, and then how do they come out from the, uh, the Tahlul, how do they come out from the Ihram? So that question is very important question. So we are encouraged to put the precondition. Were you here last week? Okay. Uh, quickly, can I just come back to this? Since the person, if you're doing it for me, then no, no, it's okay. Then everybody will get the benefit. This precondition, if the man will ask questions, say, why would the man put a precondition? Because they got no menstruation, heat, or so that. It does apply because there are cases where when they arrive in Jeddah, either they, what you be like, they fall down, they got sickness, they were attacked by meningitis, they become coma, they cannot perform the, the, the prayer. They could not perform. So they need ihram. If you go Umrah, sometimes you go only for 9 days. Plus a 2 days journey, 11 days. So if you fall sick, and then you want to spend 5 days in Makkah, maybe 4 days in Medina, so before you even go to Medina, you're still not recovered. You can't perform your Umrah. And you're in ihram. 
beat the man. For the woman, suddenly after taking all medication, preparation, all okay, when they reach there, so they are they they come in heat. They cannot perform the power. So they did not have the precondition. Now they are thinking, this question applies that time, that how would they come out from this ahram? They would have to wait until they clean, but then they have to come back. <coughs> so that was where I uh, accidentally probably uh, maybe insulted you. Huh? Sorry. So that question applies. So if they do not put the condition, then they, when they cut the hair, they have to pin it down. Yeah, that is the correct procedure. If they do not put in uh, condition, they have to cut the hair and then pay the down. So out of the haram, no umrah for them. Yeah, but if you put a precondition, you cut the hair, you do not pay the down. This is clear. So I related this because I remember that you know I maybe it was joking to me because I took it for granted we are close friends. But sometimes you know this shaitan will find every opportunity to say that maybe I embarrass somebody. So. Alhamdulillah, I mean, I hope uh, Berhadil and Ani uh, <laughs> forgive me. Anyway, so uh, so that, that is a precondition about that. Huh? So, um, again, we come back to the Tabiah thing, which when we come in and answer Allah, Labaik Allahumma Labaik, come with full of humility. And in our heart, Alhamdulillah, Allah, you have called me. And I am one of the believers. So I'm so happy that Allah, that you know, I'm thankful to you that you have called me and I'm able to come. Because remember what we see last time? When we came, we took the leave, we have the money. It's not our money. It's not our leave. It's not our help. It's all given by Allah Ta'ala. So we must be thankful to Him. Yeah? When Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu through His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam utterance, with that He will execute all of Allah's calling. Yeah? And forgo all His prohibition without hesitation and doubt between Allah's commandment and those from men between the Prophet Sunnah, example conduct and the community's tradition between seeking for Allah's acceptance and putting his last full desire this is what we're seeing when a person who's a believer he will stop all the things that is prohibited he will follow all Allah's commandment are we one of those? sometimes yes, sometimes no isn't it? because we are weak but we are trying to improve ourselves we are 10 classes we listen to good uh, lectures on the YouTube, uh, from the lecture, from the days, uh, some uh, basic knowledge from here and there. So we are trying, trying our very best. In a country which is a bit hard over here, we alhamdulillah are not giving up. So let's do this and continue doing this. Yeah? Coming to this also, inshallah, on the 7th, uh, on the 8th, when is Maulid? Next, Next month, uh, we part of all this program. One brother said, why not we have a joint effort to do Maulid? Of course, uh, this is out of this again. People say that this is uh, only in the month of Rabi Alawal. What are you doing now in Rajab? I said that Maulid you can do every day. Every second, every minute. Celebration for the Prophet. No restriction. Yeah. So our brother has gathered and he's going to do. Let's, let's hopefully all of us can support that. And becomes one part of our good deed, inshallah. Whether in monetary, whether in energy, whether in coming over there, passing the words around, telling people or bringing people, it's all counted as reward. Let's do that also. Anything that we can score a point today to make us better, do it. Should not just limit by just going for classes or just reading Quran or just doing zikir. All are good. If we can do more, let's do it within the capacity that we can do. Don't force ourselves, but within the capacity. <coughs> This is indeed what we has, uh, has, which has been strengthened by the following atom. Then we read, Labai kala, shari kala kala bai. I heed your call, for there are no partners unto you. I heed your call. So again we testify, there is no partner on Allah. Then he is one. Remember, Qul huwa Allah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul huwa Allah, huwa ahad, Allah hu samad. Lam yalit wa lam yulat wa lam yakullahu kufan ahad. So we have testified, we read it in our prayers, but now we are trying to put into action. It's just not a word, a mere word. I hear your call, Allah, for there are no partners unto you. I mean, we really testify. When in deep difficulty, try not to ask from people, try to ask directly from Allah Ta'ala. When you have something that is troubling you, cry in your prayers. Because we have said that there is no one, no partners unto Him. Why sometimes do we need to go somewhere? Of course, when you buy the house, you have to go to the bank. You know, but a level of iman, that's level of iman. A person is believing it, doesn't go to the bank. Allah, Allah, I do not know. But what we're trying to say as human beings, we are always open to a lot of difficulties and challenges. So we're in our prayers, up there, go on, please, quietly, talk to Allah.
He's all there. He's there. He's all hearing. You do not know if you just sit one corner. They call it. You just spend one minute. They always say in silence. You know, someone died. One minute silence. Here in silence with Allah Taala. You just sit down after prayers. You did not do anything after zikr. You just sit down over there and just talk to Him in your heart. There are some effect on that. You just talk off. You know the word walk off. Walk off is talk. This is tawak of his talk. Sitting over there and just thinking about yourself, your sin, and talk to Allah Ta'ala. It is also a form of meditation, actually. It is also a form of detoxification. It is a form of regenerating back your energy. You can do all this. It costs you nothing. You don't have to pay somewhere to go to meditation. It is just sitting down over there. With all the difficulties, you know, the children sometimes they come back from school and like they're tired or something. All these are challenging sometimes, you know. So just sit down after prayers, do some zikr, do one, you sit down and just talk to Allah Ta'ala. It helps. Do it. It helps. Then you're trying to testify. You can practice this. Labaik Allah, Labaik after prayers, you know. The husband read, the wife follow, the children follow. Nothing wrong. Don't worry about it. With that, we should always accord priority to Allah's command. Acceptance and His messengers sooner. Let this be the primary and the most important act throughout our life. If we can start doing this bit by bit, starting the zikir istighfar and the salawat and slowly after prayer, asking for forgiveness, husband, wife and children and then loving each other and then start moving from your house to the community and then start moving to your workplace, start moving to the outside world, this becomes like a design in your life. You started from yourself and then your family not from yourself, you're alone after prayers, you talk to Allah Ta'ala, you submit, total submission, and then after that, when you prayers, your wife and you and the children, and then start from the outside a little bit, your, your, maybe your workplace, family, friends, and community, this is how it grows. And slowly, slowly, you become the moon, and you become, you become the, the, the radiant light for the Sunnah of the Prophet And people get attracted. And there will be people of common interest just get attracted and they will be doing the right thing. And slowly it becomes a very big beacon like where the sheep will not get lost in the sea. They are all from the teaching of Islam. It's all from the teaching of Islam is being transformed into the actual world. <clears throat> Worry not what men, the community or the world and everyone else will say. Sure they will talk. Because it is Allah who gives us life, who gives us pleasure. In His hands are the governance and the power and none shares power with Him. Such as that which we utter in the Talbiyah chant. You know, sometimes when the woman, they don't wear the hijab, they start wearing the hijab, they say, you know, my workplace, or my neighbors, or my friends. They're not going to answer for you in the graveyard. Isn't it? They're not. Maybe last time we never bring this small tasbih, and suddenly we start bringing small one, maybe 11, you know, in our hand. And we start reading because we want to remind ourselves. But we keep forgetting, so we bring small. And people say, why, you become alim, really? Forget about that. They're not going to help you in the graveyard. Isn't it? Suddenly after prayers, you, you normally after prayers, you say, and then you start talking to your friends, you go out for a cup of coffee, but then suddenly after prayers, you want to sit a bit longer, you want to do the bit zikir, and you want to do sunnah, and someone says, why you become alim now? Don't care about that. When in the graveyard, they're not going to be there. That's it. The, simple. The moment you close your door, does anyone know what you eat? Does anyone know whether there's food on the table? No. Nobody knows. So it's us, you know. We are going to be in the graveyard. We are going to be answerable to everything that we do. So, I mean, this norm, people will comment and because they see what they see, they do not know what we are going through. But if we have our own objective, we have our own target to achieve, let's do it. Because this is clear what Allah has taught us. And we uttered that also. We said, Innal hamda wa ni'amata laka wal muq la sharika la. Where all praises and pleasures and governance are yours only. We say that. There is no partner unto you. Again, we say there's no partner unto you. But that's sometimes you want to do is care what people say. Don't worry what people say. If you're doing something right according to what Allah teaches you, and we have done something what the Prophet has teach you, not hurting anyone, not going beyond the extreme, you know, like yesterday Haji Kiraman was saying the anger. There are things sometimes that you cannot show your anger. For example, a non-believer. You sit down on the table, we work in an environment over here with non-believers, right? And we see that we are having a good man. A best friend of us in the company who is really, really good friend of us, he sit down and he had a glass of wine or, or liquor with him. He didn't offer us, but he sat there and he's having his own meal. 
But so happen is on the same table. We have two choices. What I learned, we have two choices. If we can make an excuse to move, we move. But by moving, it will cause fitna. Think about it. Because then Islam is extreme. If by moving, because, oh, sorry, mate, you got your beer there. He doesn't disturb us. He's sitting at the corner there. I'm sitting here. But because there's a beer on the same table, I want to show that I'm a Muslim, I'm a good Muslim, I don't want to come near liquor, I move my plate and go somewhere else. Then it can create atmosity. Rather than that, keep at bay, we are not even touching on that topic, he and his business, nothing in common, we just have, what we can do, have our meal quickly, make an excuse and go away, rather than taking the food and move away. Sometimes, the anger doesn't have to be show off, what Haji Kiraman taught us yesterday. So we can do it subtle. Subtle doesn't mean that you are just, oh, if I do, no. Subtle means you are doing tactfully, you are doing intelligently. You see, you want to pray, meeting comes in, and you know that this meeting is going to go through all the prayer period. But then there is always break for smoko, right, over here. They have break for smoking, or for, for toilet, even break. In a meeting, a person has to go, they have to go. So you can always give an excuse, tell the boss, prior to that, the boss, uh, between these, I need three minutes break. A quick prayer, two, three minutes. Three minutes. You got your wuzu. You already know where the place you're going to pray. Early you tell him. Rather than you say, no, no, boss don't understand, I don't care, I'm going to my prayer. And you show a, re a revolution. Islam is not like that. Islam is more than that. So here it teaches us, we will do things according to what Allah's teaching, according to what the Sunnah the Prophet, but tactfully, intelligently, and not scare anyone. We can always be intelligent rather than being absurdly and then get wrong uh, message across yeah and with that let ourselves and our conduct throughout the state of Ahram and throughout our stay in the holy land in fact throughout our life be directed towards the fulfillment of covenant which we have uttered about so when we read labbaik allahumma labbaik labbaik ala sharika laka labbaik inna alhamda wa ni'amata laka wal mulk la sharika laka we have testified we have uttered the words in Ahram was in Ahram what does it remind us? Death. death. If in death, while we are still alive in death, we have uttered, if we are doing death, then we will know that journey is sure. Not 100%, 1000%, million percent. That journey is for sure, we are going to die. We will be wearing a haram, like it or not. For the man, the two pieces of cloth, like it or not. That time you got no lungi inside. You got no velcro, all is that, nothing. You are at the mercy of everyone. Isn't it? Like I said last week, if someone wants to put cold water on you, you have no choice. But hopefully they have knowledge you don't put cold water on winter in Bafi. You'll be shivering. Isn't it? You say you don't know feeling? Sure you have feelings. You don't get body. So we hope they have knowledge and they will accord it. If we know that it's going to happen, why not prepare ourselves now? Prior to the real death. This is Ahra. This is Talbia. When we understand, then we know that we are walking towards our graveyard. In like the baby was born. That's what we want to do in the hell. That's what we're doing hard. Yeah? With that, we take a short break. The second part will not be any continuity of chapter 8, but we'll be looking at, in chapter 9, we'll be looking at the launching of the Hajj, inshallah. Yeah? Sure. Five minutes break for stretching or for whatever you say. Allah, Allah, Allah. No, no, that's it. Yeah.